The time is now 2.07, and I am calling the meeting of Nantucket Town Finance Committee to order for June 2nd, 2020. I, I don't have a copy of the audio video announcement. We are being remote participation. Okay, so this meeting uh, is being held via remote participation via Zoom and YouTube pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order regarding open meeting law. Information regarding the open meeting law can be found on the town's website and I imagine on the state's website too. Uh, is that a sufficient reading, John? Of what yes. the, okay, very good. Um, all right, so moving on to the next agenda item. Is it approval of the agenda? Can I get a motion to approve the agenda, please? Motion to approve Motion to approve. <laughs> Second. <laughs> there we go. Very much, all in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> I for me that's unanimous um, do you have any public comment for issues that are not otherwise on the agenda I can't tell who's uh, maybe remotely watching we do have some other participants here let's see attendee Rick Atherton he may be the only member of the public today does Rick have anything to say I don't know how to tell if he does. Does anybody see anything? No. No. Okay. Um, so now we have adoption of minutes for meetings and we have quite a large number of them. Has everybody had a chance to read them, I hope? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so why don't I start by asking if we have any call outs. Um, does anybody have any edits or corrections they wanna make? Joe? Um, a pretty minor one, and I think Allie may have fixed this, on the January 21st minutes, the dates were all 2019. Um, I don't know if Allie, Allie fixed those. Um, that, that was sort of the one thing that I noticed. Those have been um, corrected. Thank you. Okay. Joanna, did you have any additional comments? No, I'm good. Thank you. Chris, do you have any comments? I'm fine with it. Okay. Uh, what else we have, Peter? I'm fine. Okay. Then can I get a motion to approve all of the minutes at once? Motion to approve all of the minutes. Okay, and we should read Second. the dates. Okay. For clarification purposes, uh, let me see. Trying to find a list of the dates. Um, Stephen, I can read them off or? Thank you, please. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> give me a minute because they're all backwards. Um, April 14th, 2020, um, February 18th, February 13th. Sorry, this isn't an order, it's just how they were attached. Um, February 10th, February 4th. So, December 8th, December 7th, December 3rd, yeah. January 21st, May 12th, May 21st, yeah. March 2nd, January 30th, and okay. just uh, February 3rd. Yeah, regardless. Joanna, it's your motion to approve all of those minutes? Yes. Okay. And Pete, you intend yeah. to second that? You know, fight for oh, yeah. Yeah. Peter, go away. <laughs> he, he might have gone away, and somebody's on the phone, I think, in the background somewhere. So, gone away, and somebody's on. Oh, there he is. He's back. Okay. Okay. Maybe somebody who just heard what we were talking about. Chris or Joe, can you second that motion? I'll ha I have to second it. Thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. 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 Stephen George has joined if you didn't can't see that on your screen. Oh, I see him now. Yes, thank you. Hi, George. Steve, why don't you take that uh, vote by roll call? Uh, very good. Okay. Uh, so in the order that I see you, uh, Joanna? Yes, I. 
Peter? Yes, I. Chris? I. Joe? I. George? George, can you unmute? I. And it's an I for me. Thank you very much. I know that was a big backlog of minutes to work through, so I appreciate everybody who had a hand in getting that. <laughs> George. Uh, let's see. So now deliberation and ruling on amended articles. Brian, do you want to take over and walk us through what the amendments are that we're? Sure, I'm gonna stop uh, sharing at this point for the agenda, is that okay? Yes, thank you. Um, I think that the town manager Libby was gonna go through the um, document that you all had, which was the pared down warring, warning, warrant, excuse me. And after she's gone through that, I'll take you through the revised motions. Okay, so at the board meeting last week, the select board meeting, we went through the warrant and Brian and I had already gone through it with John to review, you know, the most essential articles for town meetings so that we can keep it, keep the town meeting as short as possible, but with the understanding that some of these things really need to get done before June 30th. So we've pared it down from approximately from 117 articles to I think we're down to 28 at this point. And I even updated this warrant shortly before your meeting, so I'm not even sure if you got the most recent version. Um, but to take you through, so I'm looking at, I'm not even sure what's in your packet. I'm looking at a document that uh, does not have a date on it, of course. Um, it's dated yesterday, June 1st. What do you guys have? Do you have something dated June 1st? Uh, the file's dated June 1st, yes. Yeah. All right, so going through the articles, we have, art of, so what I tried to do here with John's input is prepare a document that is a kind of a warrant because we've already printed the warrant. It's at the printer waiting to be mailed, so we're also planning to send out a letter to the voters explaining this whole situation. So the table of contents is intended to show which articles would be stricken under our plan. And I'll just go through that and then that'll lead us to the articles. So articles one, two, three, one, two and three have no changes. Same motion. Article four has a change. It relates to the airport revolving account. Can you explain it, Brian? And I don't think it's in your document quite yet because we are also going back and forth between should we, for the, for the ease of viewing and explaining to the voters, should we print the original motion and include the new motion or should we have the motion and show it redlined so that people can maybe more easily see what changed? So wrangling that over in my mind, but any um, input would be appreciated. So article four is the first article with a modified motion. Brian, you wanna explain that one? And I, don't, I don't think you have it yet. But yeah, we actually did, we did send it's it. It's been to. sent out. Oh, okay, sorry, I forgot. So, it did go out individually. The change for to Article Four motion is a, just a reduction in the spending authorization limit for the airport for the fuel revolver. Uh, it was originally approved at five point two million. They do not believe they'll collect anywhere near that next year or during next fiscal year, fiscal twenty one. So they have asked, and the airport commission has already voted to recommend a reduction to two million for that revolving fund. Um, so that's the change in Article Four. Any questions about that? No. Okay. Article five, the reserve fund, there's no change there. Article six is likely to have a change. Brian can go over this, but we are trying to wait till later in the fiscal year, as such as it is, a couple of more weeks, to see if there are any other last minute end of year transfers. 
Um, that's correct. So um, what I had proposed to the town manager was that we, and I discussed it with the FinCom chair as well, is that we hold Article 5, or Article 6, excuse me, the, um, the recommendation of the revised motion until the 23rd meeting to ensure that we would have time to capture as much as we can that may need to be transferred before the end of the fiscal year because it'll be our one opportunity to use free cash if we needed to. Um, so I've made the recommendation that we hold that motion and that change until the 23rd to ensure that we've captured everything that we want to take care of at the annual town meeting. Hi, everybody. I'm finally here. <laughs> Welcome. I'm yes. on my phone. I had to go on my phone. This is, yeah, Zoom works 89 out of 90 times, but not today. Sorry, apologies, but I know Stephen, it's in good hands, so I'm going to leave it with you. Yeah, we've we've made do, but glad to have you join us. <laughs> I'm sure you've better than made do. Sorry, everyone. Thank you, Denise. Article seven, no changes. Article eight is the general fund operating budget. And Brian, do you want to? This is going to take a little explanation. Sure. Um, it actually, I guess. Maybe I probably should just do it in conjunction with Article 15 since they're both kind of intertwined with each other. Yep. Article um, 15 is the Enterprise Fund operating budget for fiscal 21. So. And this um, is the, sorry, just to, uh, let me back up on one thing a, a little bit. For those who don't know this, I think I might have said it in an email, but at the board's meeting last week, the board agreed that none of the warrant articles that are associated with ballot questions are going to be taken up at the town meeting. <clears throat> so regardless of what happens with the ballot question, the intent is not to vote on the companion warrant article. <clears throat> that if the ballot questions actually pass, then that decision as to whether or not to bring the article to town meeting can happen at a later time, potentially at a fall town meeting if we have a fall town meeting. This leaves an issue with the island home budget, but I think Brian has an approach. Okay, um, thank you, Libby. So as, as Libby mentioned last week, the, the select board, um, we had a lengthy discussion on what would happen if the, the ballot question for the override were to pass and how would we manage it? And um, we, we couldn't use levy capacity within the, or a raise and appropriate approach with the island home because it, if the ballot question on the override were to pass, it would automatically become override dollars because of the way that we had done it. And so the board instructed us to come up with a different solution to fund that. One of the solutions that was kind of briefly discussed was, well, we could fund it this year with free cash. So <clears throat> we, We've talked about it and I've looked at it a couple different times and tried to come up with a solution that works without completely eliminating almost all of the free cash between the general fund and our island home. So the solution that I've presented to the town manager um, actually this morning through discussion was we, yeah. as most of you recall, during the May budget presentation to the select board, we and even during the December presentation to the select board, we have always withheld $3.1 million, which is what we had originally planned on transferring to Ireland home through the normal levy capacity. Now, when they, when we had came to the, the decision to put the override question on the warrant and the ballot, if it had been successful, we would have had that $3.1 million of levy capacity unused within the levy limit. So what I proposed to the town manager was that we use that $3.1 million of levy capacity that is within proposition two and a half to fund the majority of the shortfall that we would be funding with free cash in the general fund operating budget in article eight. What this would do is it would then unlock the majority of the free cash that was going to be used in article eight to balance the budget um, in the presentation that we had given to the select board back in May, and we would use that free cash this year as the funding source, along with retained earnings, 
to close the gap that was originally proposed to be closed via the uh, debt, the override article um, that the board has chosen not to implement if the ballot were to be successful. So it would preserve some of our free cash um, and it would we would still be able to use that levy capacity, but it would be used for the general fund budget versus um, our island home. And again, the reason that we have proposed doing it this way is because it has it is there and it is available. It would reduce the reliance to balance the operating budgets on free cash for fiscal 21. And it would not create a situation that the override was utilized because we'd be using it for recommending the raise and appropriate for a different purpose than the purpose that the override was voted for being the island home. So we discussed this morning talking to the FinCom about this approach to to um, to solve the to solve the potential issue based on the direction of the select board last week. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Libby, but the approach is that we will present this same discussion to them tomorrow night um, and then would be able to finalize motions for Article 8 and Article 15 once this was presented to them. This is the, um, I think, the easiest solution rather than relying on potentially about $6 million in free cash to balance two budgets. So that's why we've proposed it. I see Chris has his hand up. Thanks, Stephen. Um, I, I mean, it sounds on the face like it makes a lot of sense, Brian. What is, what, is there a downside relative to other approaches or, or a risky piece of this uh, relative to other approaches? The only, I mean, the only, it, it solves a problem of using, you know, 60% of the free cash, Chris, to, to balance the two budgets and um, it's levy capacity that would have originally been used for Island Home. But given the fact that if the um, the override question were to pass, we couldn't do a raise and appropriate in the enterprise for Island Home because it would immediately engage the the, um, the override, which is what the board has suggested that they do not want to happen. So this is the approach that would minimize free cash and still balance all of the budgets. Thank you. I guess I'll go. Um, I'm just sort of curious, that the, so the select board, is the, the presumption is that these override articles uh, on the ballot will not pass, and so why take the risk at, at the town meeting since it follows the, the ballot? Um, go ahead, Olivia, I'm sorry. Uh, well, you yeah, feel free to add. I think that may be a presumption, but I think the overriding concern was that we regard, um, if any of the ballot questions did pass, then we, some of them would would necessitate extensive possibly discussion at town meeting and there were a couple of object of objectives one reduce the amount of time we're all together at a town meeting and two consideration for the taxpayer in this very difficult time where a lot of people don't have jobs and reduced work and to try to lessen their financial burden as much as possible just you know for now Got it. Yeah, I mean, I would say that, sorry, Joe, I didn't mean to interrupt. I, I would just say that um, reducing the debate at town meeting as much as possible would seem to be a really important objective. I agree. I, I agree with that too. It just that it strikes me as if it passes at the ballot, you have sort of a pretty strong, I mean, it, it's a moot issue, but it certainly seems to me you'd have a pretty strong argument that, they, that the voters had already approved it. So why argue about it at town meeting? But well, I think we just don't know how much it would get argued or not at town meeting, but it can always be put on the next town meeting. Right, Brian and John? Yes. Yes. Does, does that next town meeting have to be within a certain number of days? I mean, would that carry over all the way if we needed to go to next annual town meeting? Uh, no, because, uh, I, yes, you could go to the next annual town meeting. The only time there's a deadline is when the um, appropriation comes first and the ballot question comes second. Here it would be the reverse. Great. Can I ask a question? 
with, we're still going to call the article, so it's possible that this article would not get called, in which case it would be voted in accordance with its recommendation. Mm. <clears throat> well, I would think, correct me if I'm wrong, Libby, but I would think that you would want to call both of these articles in order to make these corrections. Any, if there's any correction at all in the essential articles, they will have to be called. Yeah, and so called with the different motion. We can't do a technical amendment to the Finance Committee's motion like we have in the past? Well, we can, and that is one of the things that Brian and I have talked about. We were just, again, thinking that we want to reduce any potential for extended discussion on this and we thought that this might be controversial so if we have a different way to go that would be that would get us through then do that I, let's do that but it's i think to answer that that part of the question too sir was that after we talked to the select board the plan was to have a fincom meeting on friday to approve the revised motions for articles uh, 8 and 15 which would present those as the way that they're being recommended so that hopefully there won't be another technical amendment to them or need to. So once, if the select board endorses kind of this recommendation that I've made to the town manager, then we would write the motions with that recommendation within them and make those revisions like we have to the other articles to those and have them adopted by FinCom in advance. I'm still going to have to read them in at the beginning of the meeting, right? They won't. Will they have been made available to all the voters? The hope is that in that voter letter, Sarah, that we talked about, that I would include with it this document that we're revising, which is, for all intents and purposes, is a list of technical amendments. So I, I have a question. Um, if, if the document is is a technical amendments to the FinCom motions, um, Sarah, those would substitute for what's written in the FinCom booklet, correct? So if they if they weren't called, it would be the technical amendment that is voted, correct? So then these would not have to be called in order to make these changes. They will be part of a, you know, a set of technical amendments. Correct. But the minute they're called, you're going to want to make a motion to pass over because you're not going to want to have the discussion. Well, if they're, call if they're called, um, we would still have to vote them because they're essential articles, right? Right, we're only voting the essential articles, correct. I was thinking of the Our, Our Island Home article in particular, but yeah, okay. So just to remind everybody, the way this is going to work is um, Sarah is going to do her traditional reading of the articles, which would be include the technical amendments. And um, if, they're, if they're not called, then she'll take a motion to approve all of the uncalled articles, right? Correct. Um, then um, if there are non-essential articles that have been called, uh, let's say a, um, uh, one of the petitioners wants to have a debate then we would take a motion, the FinCom would take a motion to pass over the non-essential articles that were called. And then hopefully the only thing that will be left at that point are essential articles um, that were called. And then you'd have to go through each one of them. Does that make sense? Yeah. That, that's, that's it. A, that's a simple majority vote to pass over? Yes. Yes. It's debatable. 
So John, just, I'm sorry, I can't, I, I'm on my phone, so I don't see everybody. So I unfortunately have to just butt in. Well, you look so, just fine, Denise. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. That's a, that's a first for me for this week in any case. The, uh, so for example, uh, number 75, bylaw amendment, bicycles, Mr. Golding. And Mr. Golding calls it. I would then make a motion. I would stand up and before I would say, Madam Moderator, I make a motion that we pass over this article. And well, then we take I, a vote. Is that how that would no, work? I, well, I'll leave it up to Sarah, but I'm, I'm planning what my plan would be is I'll know what the essential articles are going into the meeting. Yeah. So I'll have a list. I'll do the call. We'll vote all of the uncalled articles in accordance with their recommendation of either the finance committee or the planning board as amended by any technical amendments that you all enter into between now and then. Then I'll take a motion to pass over, not one by one, but all of the non-essential called articles. Okay. And then we'd go to a discussion and vote one by one on the essential articles that were called. So the goal for the committee, I think, is to limit to the extent you possibly can any reason to debate or discuss any of the essential articles. Mm -hmm. Because the less discussion we have on essential articles, the less discussion we'll have at the meeting and the quicker we can get, get out of there. I don't think anyone's going to be enthusiastic about spending a lot of time in a space with other people in at the end of June. Thank you, Sarah. So, thanks. May I ask for a definition of technical amendment? Sure. So, a technical amendment is um, is merely a substitute main motion that is that is different than what was printed in the FinCom booklet. So it serves as a substitute main motion. Sarah, I shouldn't be jumping in unless I should let you. Um... No, I think that's absolutely right. And it's any, really any, it can be a typo that you find between now and the meeting that's in the original warrant, or it can be the result of a meeting of the finance committee where the finance committee changes its motion on an article. We call them technical amendments. I don't know that that's the best possible name for them. They're really substitute motions. Okay, that's why I was asking because it seemed historically it's felt like technical amendments were you were led to believe it were things that were non-substantive in nature. And maybe I guess that was a mis maybe that's a mischaracterization because and I and this seems very different from that. So I just wanted to make sure that that term didn't mislead people into thinking that these were non-substantive changes. We probably should change our terminology for this event and call them substitute motions or replacement motions or revised motions or something like that. Brian, so over to you so we can get, I'd like to get some things ruled on today. So we're not tr trying to do it Thursday. The sure. Next article is Article 10, right, Brian? Yes, that's correct, Libby. Uh, what about four? Did we have to, the revolving accounts? I think we talked about before, yeah, right, before definitely. you came on, but. Yeah. And did you make a motion and rule on it? No. No. So do we want to? I'm just trying to get the, I'm sorry, I'm being really like pushing, I, trying I, I, to get I'm stuff. To take them together, unless oh, Okay, together. just do them all together? Okay, perfect, thanks. I'll stop. Over to you, Brian. Actually to Libby, because she was taking you through the motion, or the articles we we're gonna present, so. It's okay, 10, Brian. Okay, so 10 is, sorry, is the capital article for the general fund. Um, we have stricken out of that motion, out of the revised motion, all of the capital exclusion uh, request as uh, requested by the select board. And at the presentation to the select board, we also had stricken um, the majority of the free cash, except for things that were related to IT or technology and efficiency. So we kept in the school's $150,000 article out of free cash for IT um, technology infrastructure. We kept in the 
IT department on the town side, their um, network infrastructure related equipment in the amount of $100,000. We kept in the additional funding of $75,000 for server virtualization, $62,800 for uh, replacement of continued replacement of town printers and uh, computers. <clears throat> and then there's a townwide document management solution um, article that we kept in for $250,000. All told, the recommended change to the capital articles is a funding of $2,113,800, funded by $637,000 in free cash, a transfer of $346,000 from Article 10 of the 2015 Annual Town Meeting, and $100,000 from the Ambulance Reserve, and consistent with the way we've done this the past few years, a borrowing authorization within the levy limit of $1,030,000 for the sidewalk plan. Chris? Yeah, is, is, I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. Is this the article with the Children's Speech Pump Station in it or does that come later? Mm -hmm. That's, That's later. a separate article, Chris. Thank you. However, that article is intended not to be acted on because it's a valid question. Understood, okay, so we, we, it's not gonna come up later in this meeting then? It will have to because we have a revised motion to take no action. Okay, I just had a question about it when it comes up. Not, I don't want to slow things down. But well, okay, so no, uh, I mean that's that's not how I organize this thing. I basically, in the table of contents, struck oh. out everything we wouldn't be doing and kept in everything that we would be doing. So that one okay. is stricken. And then the idea is that at, in a bunch, we would. Do, I mean, this can be figured out differently, but one approach would be in a bunch we take no action on all of the ones we're not intending to act on because they're not okay. essential. Yep. May I just ask a quick question about that now and maybe put it to bed and we can move on. Um, was there, and I'm sorry I missed it, but was there a discussion around that one in particular just in terms of looking at all the capital items we've decided not to do that one struck me as the one that might be the most time sensitive? Well I think everybody recognized that a number of those ballot questions might be somewhat time sensitive. We have a lot of complaining in the Lover's Lane area, for example. And I think the board said we can't do one and it's it's none or potentially all. How, how are we gonna pick the most important one? Okay, thank you. There is a sidebar. There is a project going on right now with the Children's Speak Pump Station that is a temporary fix that can carry us through a little. Okay, thanks for that, Libby. It's just, you know, that's the board's purview, but I was just curious as to, that one sounded like maybe a really, really important one. It is a really, really important one. Hopefully we will be able to take it up in the fall, hopefully. So that was 10. So just, um, I don't know how people feel about this. Is it easier, and Sarah and John, I would ask, include you in this too, uh, if John is still there. Is it easier to redline these motions so that people can see what changed, or is it easier to keep the original in and have the, the revised one right underneath it? I think the revised one right underneath of it, right? So that you can read what it was and then you can see what it is. Okay. I think it gets confusing when we scratch stuff out. Okay. That's just my opinion. I'd like the red line because the motions go <laughs> multiple pages. It's very difficult to follow them even when they're written one time. So to ask people to flip back and forth to, you know, see where the changes are is, is a bigger ask. I'm with Steven. Well, we don't have to decide by the second, but I am going to need some direction on it. Like maybe by Thursday, cause we got to get this thing out. So just, okay. I think for those of us who are very familiar with the original motion, maybe the red line's more helpful for the, but for the majority of the public who will be just looking at the motion for the first time, maybe the clean version's more helpful. I'm sure that was not helpful at all, actually. <laughs> well, we, Chris, you're 100% right. That wasn't helpful at all. <laughs> we, could potentially, we could potentially keep in the original and then underneath the original have the red line. Yes, that would answer both parties. <laughs> so I, think, I think you have a winner, winner, chicken dinner with that. All right, 15, I think we talked about. 16 has 
a change. Brian? Sure. Um, it's actually rather substantive. Um, so <clears throat> 16. No kidding. Huh? No kidding. <clears throat> substantial. <laughs> <laughs> So 16 has a really large addition <clears throat> for costs associated with new force main from C Street pump station. Um, after the warrant, after everything had been done um, and during the, the process, the <clears throat> state notified us that we made the final cut for the intended use plan for SRF funding for the sewer force main. Typically, you need to have the funding source approved and identified by June 30th um, to continue along the path and submit the loan package in October. Um, given the timing this year of the notification, we approached DEP through our OPM and consultant for the project, Hazen and Sawyer, <clears throat> explained that it would be very difficult when this was before COVID, would be very difficult to add a $32 million article to the warrant um, in April since everything had been discussed and moved forward and we had at that time anticipated a fall town meeting. So we had asked them to grant us the leeway to ask in the fall to fund this and still be left on the intended use plan for the $32 million. And so they had agreed at that time that they would agree to let us ask in the fall for the voters to approve this and still be on this year's intended use plan and still continue along the path of um, submitting the loan package and getting and being able to move forward <clears throat> within, within the process. When we have talked about not having a fall town meeting or we're trying to not have a fall town meeting, it immediately kind of put us in a situation where we really do need to ask for this to be approved. Um, we had allocated last year two and a half million dollars for OPM for the design through bidding services and um, design through taking us through bidding for this project. What this project would do would be to replace, add a third force main to the C Street pump station to the Surfside Wastewater Treatment Facility. It would allow us to decommission the force main that failed in January 4th of 2018. Would then allow us to take the force main that's currently being used offline and do a force main assessment, which had originally been intended to do. Um, so given that fact, I told, discussed it with the manager and recommended that we add it to this because otherwise we will have to ask to be removed from the intended use plan and we would have to reapply in August for 2021's intended use plan and it would be delaying this what I would say is a somewhat critical project to get the force mains moving out of town and have two like two operational force mains like we have in the past. Um, so that's the reason that we've added $32 million to, to this uh, capital article. Uh, Brian. Let's go for it. I was say, I, from, from your description of it and from our chat earlier today, I would second what Joe just said, that he was quicker than I was. I agree. Any other questions? Oh, actually, let me just, one other small change. Um, the items funded by retained earnings in the sewer given the fact that we are going to need to transfer some retained earnings from sewer into the operational budget for fiscal 20 um, have been all made change to reappropriations that the sewer director has identified as being eligible to reappropriate because either the project is finished or his project timeline is pushed out such that it would be available to reappropriate at this time. So that would be specifically um, the Aurora way pump station in $55,000 has been is coming from a prior expended or prior capital article. The um, the 350 for sewer design and construction in Sconset is being transferred from prior capital articles, as well as the 125,000 for the wastewater treatment facilities lab upgrades. So those will be coming from prior articles, so that we can use that retained earnings to transfer into his operational budget for fiscal 20. 
Article, is that Article 17 you were just talking about? No, it's Article 16. Article 17, which is the Libby, which is the enterprise fund budget transfers, would be the same discussion point as we had with Article 6 of the general fund. Yeah. We would present that to you on the June 23rd meeting for consideration so that we have enough time to ensure that any other transfers that need to be made into the enterprise funds are able to be made. Okay, that's it for revised motions, other than turning all the rest of them into take no action. <laughs> so FYI, at the board select board meeting tomorrow night, we're gonna go over all of this again. And um, Denise, we should get you in on that. If you don't already have a um, panelist, email let me know so i can get get you in on that and if any any uh, others of you want to be attendees that would be great uh, um i don't think i've sent this out yet but i was working on a public outreach plan this morning we're scheduled right now to have two forums two pre-town meeting forums one on tuesday june 9th at five the other on thursday june 18th at five the idea would be that there would be an introduction uh, as to you know what we're overall trying to accomplish here, and then a review of the pared down warrant plan, which could come with Brian and myself. A review of individual warrant articles and motions. These are the items that would be changing with the town manager, the finance director, and the, potentially the FinCom chair and the select board chair. And then a review of how town meeting will run by the moderator, and then a Q&A moderated by the Civic League. We do the same thing on the 18th with any improvements that we discover we should make from the June 9th meeting. And I, I think these would be, I think we will post these both as select board meetings and FinCom meetings, just in case there's a quorum. The moderators pre-town conference is Tuesday, June 23rd at two, but I'm hoping that there will be a FinCom meeting at one to take up the motions that Brian just mentioned that need to be finalized. Then we go into the town meeting on Thursday, June 25th, starting at five. And we have a lot of outreach planned, including weekly announcement and or potential discussion at the board meetings. I'm working on a letter to the voters and thank you for the couple of you that gave me some comments on it. We're um, gonna be working with Sarah on a letter to the editor. I'm gonna try to get a town manager e-newsletter out the week of June 15th. I'm gonna do um, a bunch of social media posting once or twice a week beginning, the, beginning next week, June 8th. Updates on the town website, well, somebody will do a radio interview the week of the 15th, I think. I'm not totally sure who that will be just yet. Sarah and I did a NIN, uh, NCTV um, explanation on the, their program called Pulse of Nantucket. It's on Fridays. We talked about this. And if anybody thinks of any other outreach, feel free to let me know. We are going to be putting some ads probably in the INM and on app.net. Can, can I ask a question and then I do a comment on the letter? Um, my question is, so we're going to change, the, backing up a few minutes, we're going to change um, all the non-essential articles to take no action. Does that mean when these come up again, I know we've said, for instance, citizen articles won't require signatures again, but they will require the full vote of public hearings and a full new set of motions. We can't revert to the motions from this meeting. Um, I think you could definitely use the same motions if nothing's changed. Um, we would be doing a whole new warrant. So yes, we did, we're gonna have to have public hearings all over again, but I think the general idea that we're putting forward is that the, the articles that aren't being acted on would just be moved on to the warrant with the same motions. I, I don't know if there would be a reason to change any of them, but that would be- I, I just didn't know if they got scrapped if we change them to no action now. And, um, and at least we're gonna have the same board it looks like, so that'll be uh, good continuity. And then my comment, and you may have gotten this from others on the letter, I didn't, know if it was worth mentioning in the outreach that uh, making it clear that we don't require a quorum so people can feel very comfortable not uh, you know showing up to do their civic duty to help us reach a quorum thank you that's a that's a good point I will add that and nobody else did and Libby for my own um, or John I guess uh, John sat on do you need a quorum of fincom at town meeting or does it just need to be 
myself. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to go, but I don't want to make it if anyone on FinCom doesn't want to physically be there. Um, I would think it would be helpful to have a quorum of the finance committee in case you need to take a vote on something. I don't know what that would be, possibly nothing, but better safe than sorry, if at all possible. But we could do that that morning. We could send around a text saying, sorry, folks, we have a last minute technical amendment. You have to at least come for this, but you don't have to stay. Um, I just, I mean, I want to give people the option of if they're not comfortable coming, that's, yeah. you know, I, I want to give them the option. And I think before, I mean, when we all had to sit at the front of the room, which we obviously won't all, well, we will today with big long pool noodles to push each other away. <laughs> but the, the, um, yeah, I just, sorry, that's my thought. I don't know that we need to be concerned so just, with going. I wanted but to make sure that we, other than to be able to be there to do a technical amendment in the morning before the meeting. I don't know that we need to be concerned about going on the one hand, because I'm sure a lot of care is going to be taken um, to protect people. I do think it would be nice to set the example of as many of us as possible not going, to be clear that we're not all going to get in a room to try to do something and that we're comfortable not, not being there, you know, except to the extent you need a quorum. I think that would be a useful message. You, you could maybe think about having just a quorum. So instead of nine of you, have five of you. I, mean, okay. I, I, don't, I just I wanted don't, to ask why we were all together. Um, yeah, I just don't really know if there's going to be a need for a FinCom vote. I'm thinking back to prior town meetings. How many times during a town meeting is there a need for a FinCom vote? Probably not that often. Not too often. No, a couple times, but it was right, right before the start of town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Sarah, you. do you have any thoughts on that? I have, I, I've been planning on attending, so that's that. Okay. So Denise, do you want a motion to, do we want to uh, approve those yeah. that we can approve? Exactly, thank you, Joe. Um, so my, my understanding Libby from what we said before is that we are someone besides myself will make a motion to uh, take the motions as written in the article sent to us for all the ones that were sent. Is that what we're doing now? Um, so, sorry. Yeah, we might want to name them because okay. um, you're going to finish them off, I think, on Thursday. So the named ones would be, I believe, four, ten, uh, ten, eleven through fourteen. Um, no, Denise, we don't need to do eleven through fourteen because we're going to take those as we're just going to okay. pass over them. We regardless of what the motion is, right, Libby? Yeah, that's the idea. Anyway. Okay, so you just four, need to do four, ten, and sixteen today, Denise. Okay. And then on Thursday we'll do eight and fifteen, and then on the twenty third okay. we'll take um, six and seventeen. Okay. So can I get a motion for four, ten, and sixteen, please? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. By roll call is in the order in which I see you, Chris Glowacki. Aye. Peter Schaefer. Aye. Stephen Mori. Aye. George. Aye. Joe. Aye. Denise Cronow, aye. Thank you. Now, the next thing we have on our agenda is that we have to um, rescind our earlier appropriation for the grants to Nantucket Cottage Hospital, and the select board has asked us to, to reconsider the grant at $100,000, so to reappropriate that amount, rescinding the earlier, I don't have the amount in front of me, 311800 or I think it was. Is that yes. correct, Brian? Okay. Yes, 261850. Thank you. Oh, yeah, 361850. Motion to reconsider our previous uh, appropriation. I'm going to recuse before the motion if I can. Oh, yeah, sorry. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. See you all Thursday. See you Thursday. Thank you, Chris. Okay, now I'd like to uh, make a motion to reconsider. I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, all in favor by roll call, Joe? Aye. Peter? 
Nay. Okay. Uh, I guess I should have asked for further discussion before I called for the roll call. So Peter, any comments before we continue? Can yeah, I, I, I mean, I looked into this whole thing. I, I don't understand why we're paying on Nantucket for a research project that's being done at uh, Mass General. I understand that there's a relationship between the hospital, but you know, it's not like we have all this cash lying around that we can, we can, we can use it for that. I know that there was a big donation made by a, a tech guy that lowered the amount of money, but um, I have no problem with increasing the testing on Nantucket, but I do have a problem with adding money to a, you know, a, a research project, which I don't necessarily know I, what it really I means. We ought to back up and discuss what we're talking about then, because I think you're yep. going to be happy with it. Yeah, so Peter, um, the select board has, um, I'm, and I should have been more clear, apologies. The, we are not funding the research pro project anymore. It's been fully funded by private donations. This is for PCR testing only. So testing of people on island to see if they have COVID. Okay, so they have they, 100% funding for the research project? Yes, they do. Well, um, can I just, I, I'm not in charge, sorry, I'm not in charge of the research project, but they, the, the anonymous donor provided funding for half with the idea that the rest of it would be made up by private donations. So I think there's apparently, um, uh, there seems to be a confidence level that that half will be made up, but I don't think it's in hand right now. Yes, correct, Libby. That, uh, but the um, Gary did say at the select board meeting that he would no longer need any funding from the town for the serology part of it, which is the research testing. So the hundred thousand now is doubling uh, the contribution toward the PCR testing. Correct, and the select board felt quite strongly that they wanted to show commitment on behalf of the town and its citizens to. The citizens, you know, wellness in, and and um, putting effectively putting their money where their mouth is. It's not a very elegant way to phrase that, but I, I agree 100%. I think we should test everybody on the island. I just keep think we keep pissing in the wind, um, and you know, it just seems to me. I go back to the, the way the whole meeting was presented by, by by the hospital. I think they just threw numbers out. They were asking for a lot of money. We approved it without any sort of backing to begin with. It just the whole thing was just something that I would never, never see in a traditional business environment. Makes me uncomfortable to give them any more money unless I see something specifically written down and, and substantiated. Okay. All right. So we were in the middle of a vote when I, I interrupted it. Uh, so George, uh, Joe voted aye. Peter voted nay. Uh, George? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Denise, aye. Motion passes. Okay. So the last thing on our is the date of next meeting, which is Thursday at noon, and I, we have a quorum. I think all we've done is reconsidered the previous appropriation, and now we need a new vote to appropriate the hundred. Oh. Okay. All right. So we've rescinded our ear, earlier one. I thought we were doing them both together, rescinding and reallocating. So I Maybe we cut did. off a step. If the minute. Oh, that's okay. Let's 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 just make sure we. Let's take the second step, Steve. Okay. So I'll let you make, make the motion. Okay, so motion to appropriate from the reserve fund $100,000 for the purpose of PCR testing. Thank you. Okay, um, by roll call. Uh, any further discussion before I take the vote? <laughs> this time I got smarter. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second the motion. Thank you, George. Okay, then uh, Joe? Aye. Peter? Nay. George? Yeah, aye. Stephen? Aye. Reese, aye. So okay. Can, can I just ask while we're here, Peter, I thought you just said you wanted the whole island tested and now we just tried to appropriate some money to get some testing done and you said no. As I said before, it was pissing in the wind. I think if we're going to do it, let's do it right. Uh, you know, what we're doing I, I, is just arbitrary testing. Um, there's nobody here who need, if need, who need testing can't get tested. Um, you know, what are we going to do? We're going to decide we're going to do a neighborhood and we're going to test it? It just no. seems to me, Stephen, is, 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 is that right now there's a cost barrier to it. 
because yeah. voluntary testing isn't covered by insurance. It's not covered by insurance? Voluntary no. testing. Oh, voluntary. Voluntary testing. But is this allowing for voluntary testing? Yes. I don't know. I'm just um, dubious of the way the finances uh, or the way money is being allocated to the hospital. Um, and I just feel uncomfortable. So I'm, I'm still voting now. Okay, thank you. Okay, our next meeting is Thursday at noon. And for those of you who said that you're available, thank you very much. Joe, if we need you, I will, I don't think we should, but if I do, I will send you a panic text. Joe, Joe, we need you. So with that, thank you, Brian. Thank you the night call and I will bring myself, I'll bring myself on. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Brian and Ali, Libby, I realize this is a lot of work in a short period of time. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, we'll see you all on Thursday. And I'm gonna try to be friends with my computer before we start this meeting. So. <laughs> right, a motion right. to adjourn? So yeah, motion. I have a second. Thank okay. you. Second. Okay, uh, all in favor? Aye, thank Aye. you. Bye, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.